All right, we are here. Hello, everyone. I'm going to let you all come on in. We're going to do another dining documentary today. We're going to talk about San Diego seafood. Did I go live? Oh, my goodness. Sometimes, y'all, I tell you, it's just you take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is doing well. So happy that you are here once again. Um, allow me to introduce myself. Hi, I am Maggie. <laughs> I feel like I'm working at a, uh, a place with the name badge. Hello, Linda. Thank you so much for being here. Linda with the love notes. Uh, for anybody new here, usually I am welcoming you to my struggle cooking class. Clearly, I'm not in the kitchen today, but we will be in the kitchen tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big, big day. Um, usually, I'm cooking up uh, recipes for you all, uh, sharing my love of food on my sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free uh, journey. I am detoxing now from all of the fun festivities that we have enjoyed together, like the... Um, most recent lead attorney meetup. Ah, oh, Linda says you love uh, my name. Let me pull this up for you. There is a company called Marley Lily. I'm just going to drop it in the chat. I get a lot of clothes from them. They offer they offer free embroidery, and this is the three quarter. Let me see if I can find it. Why not? Is it the sweatshirt? Let's see if I can find it for you. Um, but yes, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. I always like to give you all the information and you can have your um, full name, I think up to eight characters. Here it is, the pullover sweatshirt. Or you can have your um, initials. So let me give this to you. Hello, Lauren. Thank you so much for being here, my dear. Lauren, my neighbor. Um, but thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to the fish market. All right, you guys, we're going to do, um, uh oh, I don't know if we're still here. I don't want to reload the page. Hopefully you all can still hear. I'm getting an error. Let me make sure that I'm connected. Okay. So we're going to do another dining documentary today. Um, we are going to talk about San Diego seafood. Uh, for those of you all who have been following, you know that I was in San Diego for the lead attorney meetup. I am going to do the proper recap on Saturday. This is a busy week, um, so I want to make sure that I do it justice. I was a little bit jet lag and plus still downloading pictures and collecting everything that I can. Hello, Kim G. Thank you so much for being here. Kim G is in the chat. Thank you. Uh, so the meetup was in San Diego. You all know I'm in Atlanta. I had never been to San Diego. So this was my first time. I've been to California before, um, but never San Diego. So we had an event Saturday night dinner, and then we had a Sunday morning activity. And I was there Friday night through Sunday night. So I had some free time and I went to a couple of restaurants on my own on my free time. So anytime I'm not in the kitchen cooking it up for you all, I like to bring you on the road with me. And we do this series we call Dining Documentaries. Let me make sure I put this one in the um, in the playlist. But uh, that's my dream. You all know I'm a small town girl with big dreams. So I want to go to all these fancy places and try all this different food once I get the rest of this weight off um, and just block about it and tell you all all about it. So let me get a beverage. Shout out to the Walmart water. I'm sure Brandon will enter the chat uh, at a time that's convenient for him. I don't know where my seafood lovers are at. If you are a seafood lover, find the emoji of your choice. It could be crab, it could be fish, it could be um, oysters, shrimp, and uh, drop it in the chat and let me know what you all are eating at the uh, seafood restaurant. Mm, Linda, you're so welcome. I love sharing with you all little hacks and things that I've learned. I don't know everything, um, but I actually saw 
in one of the ponchos that I was wearing, they, um, I think the attire is usually in like the $30, $40 price range and they had a half price off sales. They were down to 19. And so I bought one and I loved it for layering part of my capsule wardrobe, you know, my mom uniform. I try to be presentable from the carpool to the kitchen. Okay. So if everything is going well, you guys can hear and see. I am going to pull up the website. That's what we do here in the dining documentaries. What I like to do for you all is we're going to go to the website first um, and we're going to learn about it together. And then we're going to go to my actual pictures and I'll show you all what I was eating when I wasn't in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, so I was in San Diego for the meetup and um met with some other people there. And Lisa, you all know Lisa, when she comes in the chat, she actually recommended or said, hey, you guys want to check this out? And I was like, ooh, because the fish market is actually a place where you can buy fish, but then they also serve too. So it's kind of like a, a fishmonger and a restaurant together. So let's take a look at the website. And thank you all so much for being here. It's the highlight of my day, believe me. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And let's go to the website. That's what we'll do for the first hour. And then we will go from there. So if anybody's ever been to the fish market, let me know. <laughs> All right. So you can see here... Um, what is the website? And I'll put it in the chat. I always like to make sure I give you all, all the information if you're ever in the area. And we'll see if this is a... Um, a location that can be in other areas. Hey, Shafta, thank you so much for being here. If you want to see the screen share, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Uh, and I shared with you all, whenever I'm traveling, I like to try something that I can't get at home. Um, Atlanta's great. We have a lot of good food here. However, what we don't have is water. I mean, we have water to drink, but we don't have like a lake or an ocean. You can get some good seafood here. There are some places where they fly it in, which means it's expensive, but it's still very, very good. Uh, but I remember that from my ex-husband growing up like in the Florida area or where they have a coastline, you can get access to fresh fish pretty regularly. So that's the one thing that we don't have here in Atlanta, but we have a lot of other good stuff. And uh, like I shared with you all yesterday, whenever I'm traveling, I try to find something that's local to where I'm going to be. I try to avoid the chain uh, restaurants. All right. So let's take a look at the fish market website. Ooh, doesn't that look interesting? What is that like a seafood uh, pasta? Oh, they have sushi and everything. So apparently you can order online. So I did make reservations. So you all know how that goes. Um, but let's take a look at the website and we'll click around. It says fresh and local. Now that's good to know. So the fish market serves only the freshest catches from waters near, far, and everywhere in between. So that's good to know. So it doesn't have to be local to uh, San Diego. Seafood is our passion. Gotta love having a passion. Freshness is our mission. We love fresh and quality is our commitment. I love that. Absolutely love that. All right, so let's take a look at what they specialize in here. So for seafood, our simple grilled fish made us famous. Hmm, maybe I should have gotten that. Um, that's just a fraction of our menu. Find a familiar favorite or let one of our menu masters, that must have been the waiter, offer recommendations. Y'all know I need that because I get overwhelmed. Based on your preferences for flavor, preparation, and pairing. So I did have <laughs> Chandra's here for seafood. Hello, Chandra. Uh, Chandra, the fly to fit chick. Y'all, please check her out. She's part of the lead attorney community. She has a YouTube channel, a fitness channel. I was watching her work out this morning from the bed. I know that, Maggie. Um, but yes, please check her out. She says, hello. We got Marie Marie in the house. Thank you for coming in with the flowers. Marie Marie, our resident trucker, saving the day as always. Thank you so much for being here. Um, but yes, what was I saying? I think about, I had an appetizer. We ordered some stuff for the table, um, some bread, a beverage, a couple, uh, a meal and dessert. Well, kind of a meal, but I, I basically had two appetizers because I like to, I don't want, I want a lot of everything greedy. All right. So let's get back to the seafood. So I did have to ask the waiter to make a recommendation. Oysters. I'm going to tell you all now, 
went out with AV. You know her and you love her. Um, AV is from Boston and she introduced me to my first oysters. Anytime we go out, she has to have oysters. She loves it. It's an acquired taste. It's more about the texture, but uh, we did order oysters because AV was with us. So you'll see that. So freshly shucked oysters have been a part of our menu since opening in 1976. Ah, that will never change. All right. Check out our menus by location. Okay, we'll take a look at their locations to look at the species and appellations. I don't know what that means. What is an appellation? I know what the Appalachian Mountains are, but... um. Oh, okay. I guess that means locale. If you're an oyster newcomer, yes, that would be Maggie. Oysters Rockefeller might be the first bite for you. So I didn't, oh, y'all, I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing. So I didn't know that there were, ignorantly, I didn't know that there were different types of um, oysters. But I guess that makes sense, just like there's different types of shrimp and there's different types of crab, right? Shrimp, you have your Gulf shrimp, your Atlantic shrimp. Um, I don't know if prawns are a different type of shrimp, um, crab, you know, you have your king crab, your dungeness crab, your snow crab. So depending on the water and the area, you'll have different type of oysters. So good to know. I didn't know that, but I'm not a really big oyster connoisseur. All right, let's keep going. Oh, you had me at hello. Scratch desserts. Yes, please. And thank you. Our kitchen teams do more than just savory. They bake too. Gotta love that. Every dessert served is made in-house. Now that's good to know, made in-house. There are some places, and I'm not going to knock it, but there are some places that they specialize in what they specialize in. So they may either partner with a pastry chef or just buy cakes and then serve them by the slice. So they have chocolate cake or cheesecake. But when a restaurant can actually make from scratch, you all know fresh is best if you can get it. If you like sweets, and y'all know I, I love sweets. Every dessert is made in-house from our own classic recipes. I did have dessert, so I'll show you all that. From key lime pie, ding, 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 to chocolate mousse. Truly, save some room. Oh, I did. And that's why I got to stop. Because now every time I go somewhere, I want to have a beverage. I want to have an appetizer, meal, and dessert. Who does that? Greedy. All right. And then the retail market. I didn't buy any fish. We were in San Diego for the meetup. But this is good to know. At the fish market, every restaurant has a retail market showcasing the seafood on the menu. So that's good to know. So not only do they serve it, but if you want to buy it and take it home, you can do that as well. Hmm. All right. Order any menu item to go shop for fresh fish. And I did take a picture for you all to take home or grab a box of ready to eat smoked salmon. Ooh. I may have to look that up. Maybe they can ship it. Oh, smoke salmon. Ah, oh, detox, Maggie, detox. And don't be shy about asking our experts for cooking tips. Okay. So let's see here. It says find your fish market. Ah, so they're a California um, restaurant. Whether you're in Northern or Southern California, there's a fish market nearby. Our focus on quality and service helped us grow from a single restaurant in Palo Alto. Not sure where that is. Doesn't that lobster look good? To four locations, including our waterfront flagship in downtown San Diego. So I did go to their flagship location because we were in San Diego and by the water. So that is where it all began. And then they branched out. But just just for kicks and giggles, let's see locations just so you all can see here if you know anything about, oh, it's not sharing, just so you know if you know anything about your um, California geography. You have your Del Mar, San Diego, this is where we were, San Mateo, no idea where that is, and Palo Alto. So those are your locations. Okay, so apparently, let's see what else is on the website. Apparently, they have beautiful rooms. Now, we just got uh, a window seat um, by the water, but uh, I will say this. When you make your reservations for the fish market, you have your choice. You can choose to dine inside or you can choose to dine outside. Now, little Maggie, all the way from Atlanta, I'm thinking it never rains in Southern California. So when I made the reservations, I made them for outside because I thought, oh, it would be so nice to smell the salty air and have the, the sound of the waves and just everything going. And then it's like, 
it was cold in San Diego. So kind of like a cruise ship where they have long uh, glass windows and then they have tables at the window. So you can see outside. Uh, it was the closest thing. So we were able to change from outside to inside. But they say, you know, if you book outside and it's packed, you may not get seating. So thankfully we were able to. But they do have beautiful inside dining. Look at this space. So you could sit down and have a very nice meal as the sun sets over San Diego. What does it say? Perched above the fish market, location in downtown San Diego. Oh, top of the market. Okay, so they have like another space above the restaurant if you want ambiance, culinary ex, uh, expertise, and exhibition style cooking. Now, this is exciting for me. This is one of the things that I want to do, you all. Exhibition style cooking means that you almost have like the chef's table. And you know, I love that. Of course, I love to eat clearly. However, I love watching the food being prepared too. And that's going to be on my list. You know, if, if I ever go somewhere like a, a cruise or a resort that has like cooking classes or kitchen tours or anything like that, I love that stuff. If you ever wanted to gift me anything, I love that kind of stuff. So exhibition style means that the food is prepared where you can see it and maybe even talk to the chef. It's not just you order it and they bring the plate to you, which there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're dining with others. But I love exhibition style, so I may have to take a look at that. All right, let us continue. Oh, and memory making views, of course, it's beautiful. All right, so this is their social. You can see some of their pictures here. You can see all of the different uh, types of food that they have. All right, so let's go back up to the top and let's see what's on the menu. All right, so we have our overview of the fish market. Um, let's take a look at the menus and you can see the menus are different by location. Now that's interesting. I guess if they have locally caught uh, seafood, that makes sense, right? So since we were in San Diego, I'm going to click on the San Diego menu. All right, let me make sure it opens up in the same tab. All right, so let's see what we have here. Oh my goodness. All right, so they have an all day menu and you can see here they're open for in, indoor and outdoor dining. So if the weather is nice and you don't mind uh, the salty air, that might be a good experience. All right, let's see. Ooh, cashless establishment. Okay, good to know. Credit cards only, please. Okay, so I've heard that, you know, a lot of places are phasing out cash, but just make sure you have your card ready to swipe or tap. All right, so bread and chowder. Yes, please, and thank you. This is why I'm having to detox. So I definitely want to, um, like we said yesterday, experience what is uh, local in an area. So I asked the waiter, what are you all known for? He told me they are known for their chowder. They have two types of chowder, the traditional like creamy New England style chowder, chowder which I had. And then they have another one. I think it's called like Manhattan chowder, but it's more of like a tomato base. Kind of think of minestrone soup. So, but I had the chowder. I should have gotten this one. They had cheesy garlic bread with crab. Oh my God. Garlic bread. Okay. So these are the differences. Just calling them out. We won't look at everything, but they had a Manhattan clam chowder. So someone I was with, uh, Lisa did have that, but this is what I had. The New England clam chowder, the classic one with the white creamy sauce. I did order these for the table. Sourdough bread rolls with butter. Oh y'all, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. Mm. Hot butter bread. That's the problem, but I enjoyed with the chowder. Let's continue. So I did order that for the table. And then, like I said, AV was with us and she wanted her oysters. And you can see here, um, ah, this is why they said if you're new to oysters. So they have a baked oysters Rockefeller. You can see here that's served with spinach and cheese. So to me, that's probably like a cooked I don't know. I've never had that before. I'm not a big oyster connoisseur, but the people that know their oysters want them freshly shucked, which means they just opened the shell, loosened it a little bit, and AV gave us a whole tutorial on how to properly, properly eat oysters, and you're just kind of tossing them back. Mm. All right, so I believe AV ordered the Chesapeake Bay oysters. I guess they come from James River, Virginia. So that's good to know. So you can see they have three different types of oysters. 
All right, so let's continue. What's on the appetizer menu? Oh, you have your salmon. You have, uh, I'm not sorry, your sushi, crab and spinach dip. Ooh, crispy octopus. Okay, good to know. Crab cakes. I did get the crab cakes, and I got the crab cakes because I ordered another appetizer plus the bread plus, plus the oysters, so I didn't want to eat a full entree, so I made a meal out of two appetizers. So let's see what else is on here. All right, and I'll make it a little bit bigger for you all. All right, so they have snapper ceviche. He said was very good. Ooh, a prawn cocktails. That would have been like a really big shrimp cocktail. That sounds inc incredible. I did get this one, the salt and pepper calamari. So you all will see that. Smoked fish sample. That sounds yummy. And then black mussels or clams. So those are your appetizer options. So what I ended up getting, I ended up making a meal. I got the crab cakes and the calamari. All right, so if you're here for the salads, they have a lot of salad options, kale salad, I don't know what a Louis salad is, Cobb salad, traditional Caesar, and then a wedge salad. Wedge salad is very popular, especially in steak restaurants. If you get a nice steak, you get a nice wedge of iceberg lettuce and the crumbled crispy bacon. Oh, fast. Um, and then what is it, like blue cheese? So good. Let's continue. Sandwiches. Uh, nobody that I was with got sandwiches, but you can get a tuna melt. <laughs> Go to a seafood restaurant, get your bacon cheeseburger, something for everyone. Um, he did say that the fish tacos were good. I believe AV got those. You get a shrimp salad sandwich, a crab sandwich, and a snapper sandwich. So if you're here for a fish sandwich, you can absolutely get one at the, at the fish market. Fish and chips for our uh, English brethren. You can get your Atlantic cod. I believe uh, Hermesha got the fish and chips or a combo. Ooh, you could get the shrimp to the Pacific prawns. Y'all, I'm getting hungry. This is hard. Oh, man. Should I keep going? Oh. So you can get your fresh fish. And uh, the fresher, the better. You really don't need to do a lot to it. I know a lot of people are intimidated cooking fish, but the fresh good fish, like it said, lightly seasoning, and then just cook it until it flakes and you're good to go. All right, so you have Canadian salmon, trout, halibut, mahi-mahi, rockfish, ooh, sea bass, swordfish, and tuna. So you can see here, um, oh, they, they allow you to share the portion or you can add to make it Cajun. So basically, if you like a good fresh fish fillet, that's an option for you. I know Chandra says so many choices. I know, right? What are you all thinking so far? Uh, we're not through the menu yet, but what are you guys jumping out at? If you have a, if you go to a seafood restaurant, is there something that you get that is um, like your usual? Hi, DJ. Thank you so much for being here. If you would like to see the screen share, please find Maggie on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, Maggie, the substitute teacher. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know what are y'all, what are you all's favorites so far? But you're right, so many choices. See why I have to ask for a recommendation. All right, but wait, there's more lobster and crab. Okay, you can see I'm not getting this. One pound of king crab legs will set you back eighty two dollars. I'm not doing that. Never say never. Maybe one day I'll be in a position to spend $82 on lunch. Today is not that day. What does Chandra say? Oh, Chandra, you're like AB. You always start with the oysters. Okay, so we have them. You're going to see them. So we're going through the menu now, and then I'm going to show you all the actual pictures. But yeah, we got oysters for the table. All right. And then for the low, low price of $62.50, you can get the wild Brazilian lobster tail. I didn't know they had lobster in Brazil. I guess wherever there's water, but that makes sense, right? Um, but yes, not the whole lobster, it's just the lobster tail. So maybe if it's a special occasion, maybe if you got it like that, but I stuck to the more reasonable items. Let's keep going. All right. Um, so we're getting towards the dessert. So you can see their specialties. Oh, so you can get this, uh, the poke bowl. I don't know what a crab chapino is. Oh, that must have been the linguine. That must have been that picture. So basically think paella on pasta instead of over rice. Mmm, that sounds yummy. 
You can get a fish and shrimp curry, uh, a prawn linguine. Think about a shrimp linguine. You can get a steak, a New York strip steak. That sounds yummy. Sometimes people don't want seafood or sometimes people have shellfish allergies. Hopefully it's not so severe that you couldn't be around it. Um, a calamari steak. I should have looked at this. I've never heard of such a thing. Roasted Brussels with butter bacon dressing and fish wife rice. A calamari steak. Mm. Now I want to go back. Seafood marinara for our pasta lovers over linguine and then your East Coast scallops. All right. Now, excuse me, we're down to the desserts. What does Chandra say? Crabs are too much work. I pass on crab. It is a lot of work. Now, the thing with crab, what did we talk about before? Crab is not what you want to get when you are hungry. It is not the food because it is. It's a lot of work. And uh, I'll never forget, we took mom out. It was Red Lobster, so it wasn't the fish market. Took mom out for Mother's Day, um, birthday, whatever. Nana wanted to go. And she wanted... Um, everybody to come, including the, including the grandkids. And she just wants them to be free and have fun and order whatever they want. I'm like, okay, here's the kids menu. They were like, we don't want the kids menu. We want the regular menu. Of course, I'm not going to, you know, act a fool on Nana's special day. So how about both Alex and Marcus ordered crab legs? And so I'm just like, oh, Forget the cost. Then when the food came, they're like wild barbarians trying to get into this crab. The crab juice is flying. Got me in the eye. Alex is pouting. They were younger then. Pouting because he can't get into the crab. So then I got to move my plate to the side. My food is getting cold. And I'm over here cracking the crab, doing the work for him. And he's like, oh, mom, it's so good dipping it in the, the melted butter and having a good time. Keep going, mommy. Leave it right there. And I'm like, I said, after that, we will never. If you order crab, you are cracking it yourself. And my mom was like, oh, my grandbabies are just so happy, my grandbabies. And I'm looking crazy. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to dessert. So, yeah, Shanja, I understand. Shanja's laughing. Yeah. I'm over here shucking their crab. What do I look like? And paying for it. What? Oh, my goodness. So let's get back to desserts, okay? We heard that they make all their desserts from scratch in-house. Got to love that made every day. Um, not all restaurants do. So uh, everything is one price. Oh, you had me at hello. They had creme brulee, bread pudding, chocolate mousse. Key lime pie. Ding, ding, ding. I'm going to tell y'all that's what I got. I love citrus. I like a Kung Pao. A tart lemon will get you back here. A key lime pie. It, it reminds me of Florida and the beach and the ocean and seafood and key lime pie. But you all can let me know what from the dessert menu you would like to have. Marie Marie's laughing. Y'all, it's okay. Y'all know. Y'all have seen my struggles. These kids living the good life. Snick, snickerdoodle, what is that, like a brownie? And then a white raspberry cheesecake. I'm not even going to go through the kids' menu for $10 because once the kids see your stuff, oh, look at it, all of it comes with a beverage and ice cream. Oh, they can get fish, chicken strips, fish and chips, and then kids' pasta. Um, so, yeah, they have all your um, beverages, cocktails, wine. We won't go through all of that. We're going to go over to the pictures now. Um, but I'm just clicking through here just to make sure I captured everything. So that's the all day menu. Okay. This, when you click on it, it just takes you to the section. Okay. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. So yeah. So the fish market, downtown San Diego, on the water. So now I've shown you all the menu. You can let me know if anything jumped out that you would want to try. I told you I had, um, I was feeling a little cold because again, the closer you were to the water, it was a little cool. Uh, so I did order a hot tea and then AV got a Prosecco. So I was like, well, I want one of those too. So I got a little bubbly trying to be grown. Had no business drinking that, but I did. So I had some uh, Prosecco and then um, A.V. ordered uh, 
oysters for the table. And so we had some oysters and then I ordered the sourdough bread for the table with butter. And I ordered calamari for the table. So by then I was full. The waiter was like, are you ready to place your order? I'm like, I've been eating bread and calamari and oysters. So uh, I got the crab cakes. Um, so I made a meal out of an appetizer. And then for dessert, I couldn't decide, but I went, the, with, went with the key lime pie. All right, so let me take this down and we're going to go to the photo so you all can see. Move my lotion out of the way. I'm trying to stay greased up so I'm not ashy. Chandra is here for the uh, lobster tail and the fresh catch. Okay, so you like your fresh fish fillet. Absolutely. And you want that lobster tail. I'm not mad. Do I like lobster, but honestly, I like crab better. I like the taste of crab. It's got a milder taste. A lobster to me can sometimes be a little fishy and especially rubbery if it's overcooked, but I have had some excellent lobster. I can make a good lobster too. Maybe I'll have to do that for you all um, with the garlic butter. Oh, God. Uh, on a carnival cruise, I had some of the best lobster when they had their formal night. All right, let's go to the pictures. Thank you all for being here. All right, so let's go to the fish market. All right, so we were chatting it up. I didn't get everything, but I'm going to try and walk you all through. So we Ubered. Um, so we're on our way to the fish market. I just tried to get my phone out so you all can see a little bit of San Diego um, as we're approaching the water. Uh, I think that was just a car dealership. I don't know what that was. Not anything. Uh, let me take this tab down. Oh, let me make sure I give you all the good uh, view. Yeah, I think we're approaching. So I'm in the passenger seat and you can see we're turning. So it's like one of these roads that we're coming up to the water. So there's like water all in front of us. So I was just trying to catch it for you all. But let us continue. All right, so now we are turning into this area. It's kind of like, oh, good, it stayed at 1080. We're, um, oh, sorry, bad night. So we're kind of turning into this area. Um, you can see they have like restaurants, they have like Navy ships or, you know, different types of ships that they have turned into museums because I didn't know this, but uh, after World War II, when we created, uh, when we celebrated victory, um, San Diego was a big port that a lot of the service people came back to. So there was big celebration here. And you all know that, like, I should have taken a picture of it, but that pose that was on the cover of the newspaper where the woman like leaning back for a kiss and the soldiers kind of leaning into her, there's a big statue of it down here. So we're on our way to the waterfront. All right. So you all can see here, there's just like a, um, like a pirate ship. So you can see the waters in front of us. So there's like, just imagine the waterfront. There's all kinds of restaurants and different things there. Uh, so the fish market is one of the restaurants on the waterfront. And this ship right here, there was a name for it. I think it was like an Indian ship or something you can um, buy a ticket for. What is that? The Brigantine Seafood Oyster Bar. So I'm just kind of videoing as we're going. Um, I don't know what that is. M Miguel's, yeah. So just more stuff. So you all can see the parking lot, but on the other side of the, on the other side of the parking lot, there is uh, the ocean. You can see this uh, cruise ship. Chandra says your nephew is stationed there. Yes, yeah, San Diego is a big port. Obviously, it's a city with the waterfront. So cruise ships will come in there. You'll see this big one. Um, Diamond Princess was there. Um, so you'll see international. A lot of cruises to Hawaii depart from San Diego. Because if you think of the map of California, San Diego is on the coast, obviously, but at the very bottom. I think Brandon L. Jett said they're only like 20 minutes away from Mexico. And sometimes he does his groceries in Mexico. I don't know. But a lot of Hawaiian cruises leave from San Diego. So you would go to San Diego as the port, get on the ship, and then you would go to um, Hawaii. Hello, Mr. O, just living. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to see the pictures, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. All right. So yes, you all can see here, we are turning. I'm just going to take a look at this. So that, that was some type of Look like a pirate ship. But yeah, just lots of restaurants here. Thank you so much. Lots of restaurants here. 
And um, so we are on our way to the fish market, but I'm sure a lot of these restaurants are very similar in the sense that they have fresh seafood, they have local favorites, they have, you know, pretty much anything that you would like. Um, I was very pleased the food in San Diego, at least what I had was good. Man, there's a long line here. Oh, Port of San Diego. Y'all see all those people lined up? They must be getting ready to go on a cruise or something, or maybe they're going back. But yeah, for my cruise lovers, you know how it is. You get a day on land. Okay. So I'm just trying to see if I caught everything for you. So now we are pulling up. Now we're in an Uber, so I don't know where we're going, right? I've never been to this restaurant. Lisa picked it. And so all I know is we're getting closer. I'm in the Uber. So I'm just trying to get some video uh, of what we're passing by. Some of it's good. Some of it's not, y'all. Oh, yes. This is the Navy ship that's now a museum. I can't remember the name of it, but you see the planes on top there. Um, and they were having like, um, not a festival, aircraft carrier memorial. Okay, so this is a World War II memorial. So that's beautiful. Thank you to all of our veterans, especially those in our community, Brandon L. Jett and so many of you all. But you can see here, they have um, like, um, like an outdoor, what is it called? Like where you buy stuff, not a festival, but there's a name for it. It escapes me, but you can see here. And I don't know if they do like a pop-up shop every weekend, but you can see here. Uh, and this was Sunday. This was Sunday afternoon after the last part of the meetup. Meetup recap is going to be Saturday. So I'm doing this today. Yesterday was um, the dessert place. Meetup recap. Aw, we just talked him up. Shout out to the Walmart water. Hello, sir. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Brandon, you could probably tell me what this is. This is on our way to the fish market. And I'm just noticing that there's all of these tents here. So I don't know if there was a festival or um, a retreat. Oh, we just passed the sign. Not a retreat. What's the name of it? Oh, gosh. What is that thing called when they have outdoor festivities and you can buy stuff? Not a parade. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, and so they have this aircraft carrier. So if you have time, uh, this would be a great place to like walk and just see the vendors or whatever they're doing here and go to the museum. As you can see, it's peppered with restaurants. So uh, there's a lot to do. You can see it's a little bit overcast. Um, when the sun was out, it was nice, but you definitely need like a light jacket. Um, so there's another little ship there. So much stuff. And we are approaching the fish market. I'm just seeing if I missed anything and we're going to move on. So, all right. So there's your aircraft carrier. Oh, they had, look at this thing right here. I don't know what they're called. We'll just call them the jitneys. But they had these little like bicycle cart type of uh, get ups to take you around the city. You know, a lot of places were like little walking distance. And I did after Fogo and onto the rooftop bar which you will see on Saturday. Um, and they light up at night, like they have Christmas lights all over their frame and they're bumping the music and they can get you from place one place to another. What does Brandon say? Oh, okay. That's by the USSS, USS Midway Museum. They usually set up a flea market ah, on Sundays for the tourists. That's what it was, going towards Seaport Village. Exactly, market. I couldn't get the word out, y'all. What is wrong? I slept well. All right. So yes, um, these little bicycle things you can hop on. Well, you know, obviously for the low, low price of what, $10, $15 per person. But yeah, so this is the little flea market. So if you have time and you want to walk around and check out the vendors and, you know, all that good stuff, you can see as we're driving. I mean, it just went on a long way. So Brandon says they set this up on Sundays for us tourists. So we're coming up finally, the fish market. So you can see we're in Tuna Harbor. So we're getting ready to turn in and go to the fish market. All right, let us continue. So now we're pulling up at the fish market. All right, so this is the restaurant that Uber is pulling us up to. So you can see it's just one of these restaurants on the water. What does Brandon say? That ship is still commissioned and can be used in case the Navy needs it. Really? Our Uber driver was telling us that we could buy a ticket and it's like a museum. So is it a part-time museum? But if the Navy needs it, then y'all ain't got to go home. But 
Wow, I didn't know that. Thank you. I love this, Brandon. We got to make sure that uh, when I'm doing my San Diego recap that I have you here because they're going to ask me stuff and I'm not going to know. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for your service. Thank you to all of our veterans. I appreciate you so, so much. Brandon still supports the service. What he does, I don't know, and neither do you. All right, let's continue. All right, so we're pulling up to the fresh, the fresh market, the fish market, and we're getting ready to get out of the Uber. All right, so let me make sure I give you guys good quality. I don't know why the Google defaults. All right, so I'm just outside. Oh, I just took a picture since we were moving. So yes, this is the restaurant. We just took a look at their website. There are four locations, but all in California, Northern and Southern California. And um, this is where we had our reservations after the escape room on Sunday. What does Brandon say? Yes, they use it as a museum during the week. Isn't that something? Isn't that incredible? Who knew that? Wow. Who knew that? You can uh, use it as a museum and then you know, roll out. Uh oh, what does Brandon say? I didn't. Brandon says, please tell me you took a picture of the kissing statue of the sailor and the woman. I didn't. I know AV did. Sorry. Oh, I didn't. I should have. I was just thinking about the food, greedy. But let's, um, let me find it for you all. Oh, one second. San Diego Sailor Statue. So I didn't get a picture of this, but this is there. Um, let me pull it up so you guys can see. All right. Sorry. I should have done that. Yes. Thank you all for liking the live stream. So this is what Brandon is talking about. All right. So let me just pull myself down. So you can see the people here. So this is the waterfront that you all just saw me driving past or us riding past. And so you can see the people there. And if you walk down to the pier, so you know we were, um, and Brandon, maybe you could educate us on the history if you would like to click the link and tell us about it. You're more than welcome to come. You don't have to cam up, but if you wanna tell us about it. But what I believe is that um, you all know after World War II, when the uh, servicemen came home, you know, he found his beautiful lady and gave her a deep, passionate kiss. And so they've made a statue of it. Um, and this is at the, um, so you saw us driving in all those restaurants, but there's space where you can walk down all the way to the edge. And that's where that statue is. Hello, Uncle Stu, another veteran in the uh, chat. He says, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, I got back yesterday morning, reached down at 5.30 a.m. I took the red eye. So slept well last night, and I'm just recapping some of the restaurants that we ate at in our free time. If you all are here for the meetup recap, that's going to be Saturday. I got a big, big week this week, um, but you all know Uncle Stu, also part of the Lead Attorney Mastermind. He actually posted a recap of me talking about food, and I put that on my community tab. So thank you so much, Uncle Stu. What does uh, Brandon say? Audience know that the statue is right next to this restaurant. So bad, Maggie. I was there, but I didn't go up to it to take a picture. I was just excited and I was greedy and I was with the girls and we were. Da, 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 da. I know. But yes, that statue is right where I was and I should have gotten a picture of it. Maybe I'll have to go back. <laughs> Oh, what is going to say? You got it, Maggie. The woman was a nurse and ma married to the sailor. Oh, isn't that beautiful? He came back for his beautiful bride and just gave her a deep, passionate kiss. And now it's a statue. So, yes, this is in San Diego, right where we were. And we got Rodney in the house. Rodney says it's from a photo of the World War II ending at New York Times. So why is it in San Diego? if this happened in New York Times. Y'all educate me, I don't know. Let me go back to our photo album. But either way, you all have seen it. Um, you all have seen it. All right, so this is the fish market and right close to this is where the statue is. Yes, you all are saying hi to each other. All right, so we're getting ready to go in for our fresh seafood. <laughs> Greedy. All right, so. So I walked in and I took a picture. Oh, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Sometimes I get it right. 
sorry. Hopefully you don't have vertigo. So again, the fish market is a restaurant and it's also like a fish shop. So we're going to go through this kind of slowly because I want to know, y'all know, I'm that tourist. When I come through, I'm like this, right? But uh, of course they have dining, but uh, they also have some fish you can buy. So let's see if I can slow us down and see what they have here. But this is like a glass case. Look at that filet of, oh my gosh. All right. So what do we have here? We have smoked salmon. Let, let me know. Let me zoom in. So they have smoked salmon. So you walk in and this is the glass case that you see first. And then there's the hostess stand. So if you're just there to buy your fish, you can buy your fish and then leave. Or if you actually want to sit down and dine, you can. Uncle Stu says, yes, that picture was taken in New York Times. I just told you this whole story about San Diego after World War II. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, that's why we have the men here to correct me, because clearly, I don't know. It sounded good, so I went with it. But thank you for the correction. I'm just here for the snacks. Let's carry on. Why don't we? <laughs> so you have your smoked salmon. You can buy that. That looks incredible. I would like to flake that right now in an omelet. You have your smoked trout. Trout is also like another kind of red fishy fish. So if you like those good flavorful uh, fishes. Oh, look who we have here. We have a stream sponsor. Thank you, Money Bass, for the $2 super chat. And I'm right up your alley. If you all don't know Money Bass, he is also part of the lead attorney community. Please check him out. He's in the mastermind. He has a YouTube channel. He is a fisherman, like a real competitive fisherman. I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought it was a hobby. But apparently, you can catch fish and win prizes. Who knew? That's what he talks about on his channel. Uh, they have all kind of language over there that I don't know, chicken hawk, wriggle worm. I don't know. I try to come in there and support, but I was like, you catch it. I'll cook it. He said, Maggie, we throw it back, throw it back. Why would you do that? So anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We're going to put money bass in the ticker. You all are welcome to watch, comment, chat, like, share, subscribe. You can be here absolutely for free, and I appreciate you. It helps the channel to grow. But when you go above and beyond like that, I didn't find $2 laying around today, and I have done laundry. Sometimes I find money in the laundry, but let me update you as the stream sponsor. And the stream sponsor is the person who gives the biggest super chat, cash app, PayPal, Venmo, Facebook stars, or Instagram gifts. I am monetized on Facebook and Instagram as well now, um, but it doesn't pop up. So let me know, let me know, let me know if I miss it. And I will definitely give you credit. So our stream sponsor is the one and only Money Bass down here in Georgia um, with $2, $2, thank you. Uh, stream sponsor, thank you so much Money Bass, I appreciate it. All right, so let us continue. So we're looking at the fish case. So this is what you can buy. So we have our smoked salmon. We have our um, <laughs> money bass. I didn't even read it. Sounds like my type of place. Absolutely. But yeah, we ain't throwing it back. Brandon is laughing at me. Oh, my whole story about San Diego. Y'all know I don't know. Just come through and correct me. I am not a proper chef. I am not a proper YouTuber. Clearly, I'm not a historian or a geographer. Like I told you yesterday, it's somewhere on the West Coast. I'm in the South. You get past Texas, we don't know what's out there. Let me tell you how I found my place. I bought, when we found out we were going to lead attorney's event, I looked for a Fogo de Chao and found a place close to it. I didn't know anything about University Heights or whatnot. So I'm glad you are here, Brandon. <laughs> Maggie, the historian. No, I am not. I made it up. I don't know. Let's carry on. I told y'all, I'm just here for the snacks. Yes, thank you. Please check out Money Bass. Yes, thank you, Brandon. Oh, look at him moderating too. Okay, um, so you got your smoked salmon. Let me know what you guys like from the fish case. That smoked salmon, put that on top of a salad. Put it in an omelet. Ah, oh, crackers with cream cheese and a little bit of smoked salmon. Or if you're gluten-free or avoiding the carbs, a cucumber slice with a little bit of cream cheese. If you're dairy-free, do your goat's cheese. Put your smoked salmon, flaky smoked salmon on there. Y'all, I'm detoxing, but oh, 
What does Lauren say? There's another similar installation of the statue in Sarasota, Florida. Maybe that's where World War II ended. Apparently not, but thank you, Lauren. Who do we have here? Trad Guy Travel says the pearls are looking magnificent as usual. Thank you, kind sir. I appreciate the compliment. I always want to represent you all well and represent myself well, so thank you. All right, so we got our salmon. We got our trout. Um, I like trout. Um, I prefer salmon, but trout is also uh, good. Rodney says, Maggie making my mouth water. I know so much you can do with salmon. Those crispy, ah, money bash, you voted for them. When I did the collab with the chef, speaking of collabs, y'all please turn tune in tomorrow. A little plug for Maggie. I landed a huge collaboration tomorrow. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. Please come through. You know, I always let you shout out your channels. If you are on Facebook, you may know Aisha Williams. Her page is Cooking with Aisha. She has 1.4 million followers on Facebook. She has 100,000 on YouTube and she has agreed to collab with me. I am making crab cake. So for my seafood lovers, lovers I'm going to order it fresh tomorrow. I should order it tonight, but I'm going to order it fresh. She sent me her cookbook and I have picked crab cakes. So I'm going to make it and she's going to walk me through it. But she's also going to stream this on her channels, y'all. So pinch me. Is this really happening? So tomorrow, uh, the thumbnail is already on YouTube. Um, so you can go ahead and turn on the notifications. And I believe on Facebook too, you can have it remind you. Uh, so big, big collabs this week. And then Thursday, a collab with Chantel Simone. We're going to be cooking. That's going to be breakfast. So if you want banana pancakes, come here for that. Uh, and that's why I'm doing uh, Saturday, the recap. Friday is going to be a special surprise. So just stay tuned. Oh, Living Out Loud, the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Also, I'm the lead attorney, uh, Mastermind, one of the elders in the community, living out life on her terms and telling us all about it. Thank you so much for being here. Trad Guy says, fresh crab. It's a sad face. You don't like seafood? Marie Marie says, congratulations. Thank you, sweetheart. Rodney says, you go, girl. I'm trying, y'all. Last year, my goal was to build community, and we have done that. You all have been riding with me, and I appreciate you so, so much. My goal for 2023 is to grow with collaborations, and so I'm casting a wide net. And some people say no. Some people say yes. So uh, thank you all for all of the support. All right, back to the snacks tomorrow, 6 p.m. So we've got our smoked trout. If you want to buy that, it's going fast. Sorry, I'm walking fast because I'm greedy. I don't know what this is right here, but I blew past it. This looks like crab cakes already formed, ready to uh, cook. And then they have several shrimp. So you've got this uncooked shrimp and then Sea of Cortez. I guess it tells you where the shrimp is coming from. That looks incredible. So uncooked and cooked shrimp. Oh my goodness, look at these lobster tails wrapped and ready to go. I've got to do a lobster recipe for you all. It's a treat. Um, lobster actually came up on my no-no list, but um, I made it once where you crack the shell and you pull out the meat and you drench it in like this garlic butter with parsley, put it in the air fryer to broil. When I tell you, I cut into that stuff, y'all. As we would say, oh my God, I don't have the base nor should I, but. Oh, mm. oh you're going to get the ingredients and cook along? Yes, Living Out Loud. Um, I've already posted it. It's in my YouTube upcoming live streams, and I did put the recipe in there. So if you all want to cook along tomorrow, crab cakes, the recipe is in the uh, event. Thank you. What does Lauren say? The statue was made to recreate the photo taken in Times Square. Okay, shout out to New York, not San Diego. Now I feel better about not taking the picture. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Celebrating the end of World War II. It was. They just weren't coming back from Hawaii. Okay, I made that part up. Okay, it wasn't Pearl Harbor related, but it was World War II related. The statue in San Diego was transported via flatbed truck from New Jersey in 2007. Okay, so we know that it came from a New York photo. Can someone let me know why it was put in San Diego? Maybe it's just a big naval port. I don't know. But either way, we appreciate. Hey, Ozavis, thank you so much for being here. If you want to see the pictures, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Oh, Brandon, you like lobster tail? I can absolutely make that. 
me see if I can show you. I've made it before. I'm going to see if I can show you. I found this recipe, like a TikTok recipe. One second, y'all. I'm going to see if I can show you. When I tell you, hi, King Lion, thank you so much for being here. If you would like to see the, um, I can't multitask, the screen share, uh, find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. I'm just looking at all the seafood that I've made, y'all. See if my lobster tail is in here. I'll have to find it. But yeah, I made a lobster tail. I'll send it to you, Brandon. Oh, here it is. So <laughs> let's see. I made this and I made it with my ingredients. So fresh lobster tail. I use my goat's butter. If you can have dairy, sorry, y'all. We'll come back to the restaurant. But Brandon asked about lobster, so I want to show. Um, I use <laughs> red lobster seasoning, <laughs> lemon juice. Uh, hey, agent. Uh, thank you so much for being here. You can find the pictures on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Um, so butter, garlic, seafood seasoning, and then lemon juice. And honestly, you all, when you have, let me just expand this out. When you have fresh uh, seafood, you really don't need a lot. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me show it to you guys. I'm going to show you really quick. We're going to take a little bit of a detour. All right. So those were the ingredients. This is actually, you guys, this is how I, <laughs> welcome to the birth of Maggie, the substitute teacher. Before I ran into lead attorney, and when were these pictures taken? Um, before I heard him say, if you are, um, uh, over 35, start a YouTube channel because you have life experience that people need to know. This is what was on my social media. I would take pictures of the food that I was making and then I would post the final product. So it was literally just a collection of slideshows. And so people would always, I started with the end product. You can see it up here, but, um, then people would ask, like, how did you do that? So then I started taking pictures of the steps. So for me, it was a natural progression just to turn on the camera and walk you all through it. Uh, so, yeah, so let me go through the lobster tail and I'm going to see uh, the rest of the chat. All right. So let me walk you all through what I did. So those are the ingredients. I always start with putting the ingredients out so people who want to recreate it can know exactly what I used. So several pictures. So I got the lobster uh, out onto the plate. I just take several pictures. And then what you want to do is you want to use scissors. So you have your lobster tail. You could tell that it is, you know, the meat is inside here, right? So you want to get some really good kitchen shears and literally just hold the tail and like cut down the back, like cut down the spine. <laughs> you guys are talking to each other. So you're going to cut and then you're going to like not break it all the way open, but you kind of want to like break it open a little bit. And then you're going to lift the meat up out of the flesh and kind of flap it on the side. Okay. So that's how you get that beautiful presentation. So I did that and you can see here, it's still raw, but I pulled it out and I think there's like a little vein or something. You got to pull that out just like you devein shrimp. Okay. So this is the meat that we're starting with the lobster meat. All right, so I'm just taking pictures from multiple angles, but you all can see here, these are my kitchen shears. So I just cut it out and then pulled it up. You can see the little slit right here where I've cut it up. Showing y'all how to make lobster tails. Yes, Maggie can make lobster tails for you. All right, so now we're gonna season it well. So I'm using, you could probably use the seasoning of your choice. This is so funny. I'm walking you guys through the cooking. This is how my channel first started. If you actually go all the way back, this is what I would do, like this, take pictures but I'm sure you all like to see it in, in real time. So now I've got it on parchment paper and it's on my air fryer tray. You can see here and uh, I'm sprinkling it with uh, the seafood seasoning, but you could probably use the seasoning of your choice. Ah, and you can see the garlic I put on here. So it looks like I made some garlic butter. You can see it's kind of melted down. So I've kind of brushed it with the garlic butter. You can see it's all here and, um, then we put the seasoning on top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's going to be good. All right. So just lots of pictures. I take them from multiple angles. So this is going into the air fryer. So you can see the color has changed. Once seafood um, or shellfish is cooked, it goes from that like a brown color to this bright um, red color. And you can see our um, lobster meat is looking good and plump and garlicky. 
and I made it. Yeah, oh, I, I did a video. I forgot, y'all. Look at me. Let me show you the video. This is me in the kitchen, getting ready to take it out. I think I'm. What am I waiting on? Here we go. Go, Maggie. Go. So I have a salad. You can see I just made a little place on my salad, but I'm getting ready. I'm putting the lobster there. There you go. There you go. That's what you want. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So this is me. Those are the beginnings of Maggie. <laughs> Brandon says in the lead voice. Oh my God. All right. Let me give it to you again. Oh, I'm showing you guys. This is, this is how my channel used to, this is the beginning. I would take, you know, take little pictures and videos. I didn't have the setup so you could actually see me, but uh, yeah, I'm putting it. Um, so I just have some spinach and some cherry tomatoes. And then there's some hot sauce uh, back here. Um, and I literally just made a little place for the lobster to go on. And then I did put uh, I can't tell if this is balsamic or whatever, but just simple protein and uh, some veggies. I'll give it to you one more time. So yeah, in the air fryer, y'all can do this. We'll do this one day. This would be great for Valentine's. I should do lobster for you all. And then you've got your garlic butter. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. I put the balsamic on the salad with some goat's cheese so it wouldn't get on there. <laughs> Rosalind says the salmon looks good. It's lobster, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, okay, so you see I'm showing you the dressing that I use. Yep, that's it. I think I got a picture for you. There you go. I'm going to let y'all take a moment. So this was lobster that I made. Um, if you're doing a surf and turf, you can pair it with a steak. But uh, yeah, when I tell y'all, like, I like my own food. Like, you can eat that and lose Try guys says, wow, reaching for my Tupperware. Oh, you guys, I love cooking for y'all. So I just turned the plate around and took several pictures. Some of them look better than others, but yeah, this is me. So you have that, you know, blast. Um, Marie Marie says, it looks delicious. Thank you, sweetheart. Try guy says, it's literally like I'm watching a food network from your lips to, guy, to God's ears. Y'all, I don't even really think I'm that good, but thank you. I know I'm not the best, but I try. And I saw a TikTok recipe come up and I was like, I can do that. And I did it. <laughs> Maybe, Rosalind, are you watching on delay? Maybe you're still on the uh, case, the, um, the seafood case. But no, sweetheart, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So yes, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, so that was my that was my meal. Yeah. So just showing you all what I made. Okay. So let's go back to the album. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the fish market. But yeah, that was in 2021. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been I've been like I said, I've been cooking since 1842. But that's what I would do. I would just take these little video pictures. And uh, if you look at my phone, or you look at my social, it's just food, food, food. But yeah. Brandon says, Tupperware, you would not eat that on a napkin. We would cut it properly and get a nice piece. And then we'd get that, some extra like garlic butter and dunk that in there and just be dripping down. <laughs> Rodney says, I'm jealous. Y'all, I would absolutely cook this for you. It's nothing. It's nothing. Absolutely, I would make that for you. Absolutely, I would make that for you. All right, so where were we? Oh, Try Guy says you got to try some of Maggie's salmon. Oh, that's what I was telling Money Bass, y'all. Those Cajun salmon bites, crispy Cajun salmon. If you want me to make it again, I will. Uh, we made it when I did the collab with the chef. Oh, that's right. And then I took a detour about tomorrow. But yeah, sometimes people are intimidated by seafood because um, it's expensive. And if you overdo it, it's kind of ruined if you get it like rubbery and dry. But when you nail it... Hey, Mona. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for liking the live stream. All right. So we took a detour, but what, what are you all talking about? So clearly Maggie is not the historian. I just make it up as I go. So I don't promise you any accuracy. I just make the snacks. I know what I'm good at. Okay. Sorry. Um, then we went down the lobster tail road. 
Chad Guy says, uh, sorry you weren't able to meet up. Uh, it's okay. Um, we did have an amazing time in San Diego. I'll tell you all about it Saturday. I got a couple um, collabs I want to stay focused on. Um, and then Lee did say that he's planning two more. He wants to try and get together with us like once a quarter. So, you know, if I'm willing, able to go, which I plan to go, why, why shouldn't I? Um, he said one in Las Vegas and then another one in Denver, Colorado. So you all can count on Maggie. I'm always going to go because I'm greedy and I'll take pictures of everything except for Brandon. He would like his, um, he would like to remain, you know, off the internet. Um, but I'll tell you guys everything and you'll see the food and, and all that stuff. So uh, Denver and Las Vegas should be this year. Yeah, we're going to have other meetups. Absolutely. Chad guy says, I'll see you at the next one. Oh yeah. The wheelchair. Leads. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> y'all are going to see all of this. The, the Cuban links, everything. Everything. Oh. Uh, Brandon, salmon is your favorite fish. How do you like it prepared? You can do, oh, I love a smoked salmon. You can have that in any meal. Breakfast, brunch, in an omelet, on a cucumber, on toast, on, ugh. Um, the crispy Cajun salmon is good. Um, the salmon filet, it's just, oh, how do you like it prepared? What does Lauren say? I'm so glad I was able to get on today. I finally realized that your notifications were turned off and you kept missing me. Thank you for being here. You all, look, I'm just happy to be here, but I have heard that sometimes YouTube will adjust who you're subscribed to and they will adjust your notifications. So I am here every day. I did take Saturday and Sunday off because I was traveling with lead uh, or, you know, for the event and I with time zones and all that y'all. But um, I do stream every day. So if you haven't seen me and if I haven't told you I'm going to be out for a while, check, check your settings. So thank you for checking and welcome back. What does trad guy say? I have to use my hands for Viking style with a chalice. Some of them Viking movies. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they were pretty like, we try to be elegant here. I'm going to be drinking out of my glass and try to use um, silverware. But excuse me, if you have finger food, you're supposed to use your fingers. Really, the etiquette is just about knowing what's appropriate. So, yeah, if you're just going to grab in there, and get it, go for it. I'm going to continue to try to refine. I got my own oh, goals and I want to set a, a good example. Oh. All right, so let us continue. Try guy says uh, YouTube messing up my subscriptions. You don't get notifications. Yeah, just check it up. Rodney, I don't know what this means, but welcome to the happy, wholesome, family-friendly side of YouTube. What does Brandon say? Baked or smoked? You like smoked salmon too? Okay, or baked? Yeah. Filet as a whole or, ooh, ooh, little crispy garlic salmon bites. I'll have to try the crispy garlic. Have you made it before? And if you have, if you care to share the recipe, I'll try to recreate it. It's probably just like the Cajun salmon bites, but instead of Cajun seasoning, a garlic seasoning, ooh, probably like a garlic butter and then a quick pan fry. Mm. But yes, when you get the whole filet, like at Costco or salmon, oh, that's a beautiful presentation with the lemon slices on top. Mm. Who do we have here? We have Vondell Garrett in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Doing well. Hope you are doing well, sir. Look at Brandon says, I usually eat salmon croquettes for breakfast or as a snack. Well, aren't you fancy? I think in the South, we call them salmon patties. I tried to make them once. They did not turn out good, but I, I used the canned salmon. I got a recipe from the Boy Scout leader. I should, mm -mm. Um, but tomorrow when we do the crab cakes, they're going to be like lump crab, like oh, so good. I probably should try it with fresh salmon. That would be good. Trad guy says, the only thing I don't like is using straws. Yes. Yeah, my etiquette teacher, Margaret, straws are for children. Trad guy, trad guy travels likes a baked salmon. Absolutely. If you get a good piece of fish, you really don't have to do much to it. Rodney says you were talking about my various salmon recipes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down for a new recipe. You like that lemon, too? It's fire. OK. All right. Oh, now I'm hungry. Y'all, I'm trying to fast a little bit since I've been getting it in. Oh, 
All right, let's continue. Where were we? We went off on the lobster. Uh, we were here. We went off on the lobster uh, derailment. All right, so we're at the fish market. Sorry, I'm just blazing through. All right, let's see what else they have for sale. Then we're going to go over to the restaurant. What does Lauren say? Canned salmon for patties is the way to go. Okay, but the canned salmon, it just didn't taste good. Maybe I'm... Maybe the salmon I got was not good. It still had some bones in it. I just, it just the presentation was not. Ooh. Marie Marie says, I don't want y'all to get dizzy. Hold on. Marie Marie says, I love making patties and seafood cakes. Okay, so crab cakes tomorrow, y'all. They travel well and they're a quick way to get in your daily protein. That's a great idea because you can make a big batch of them. We saw the crab cakes in the video and you can, oh gosh. The crab cakes that I have made, Y'all, they even reheat up well the next day. All you want to do is get a little bit of butter since they have like some breadcrumbs or I'm going to use my gluten-free crackers tomorrow um, and just brush a little butter or pour a little butter on them, pop them up under the broiler. So good. Try guys, cooking right now. Oh, I'm going to cook right after this. I almost wanted to eat before I talked to y'all, but I was like, nah, let me go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. So what else did we have? All right, so we looked at the lobster tails. That's where we got off, <laughs> got off the wagon. And then they have um, whatever this white fish is. I'm not sure. I don't know what this is, y'all. I didn't get low enough. Low, 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 low. Oh, oh, this is garlic bread. You can tell it's a half loaf of garlic bread spread with the garlic butter that you could just pop under, under the broiler. Thank you all for liking the lime, the live stream. Marie Marie says, yes, you're here for the garlic dill butter. Oh, yeah. Don't you fancy? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we got our garlic bread. Uh, they got mussels there. Mussels and clams. All right. So you can get your fresh mussels and clams. They got your clam chowder. So you all can see this is what I ordered. You can get the traditional white creamy clam chowder, or you can get this Manhattan clam chowder. This one is the red base. And they said it's kind of like a tomato, like minestrone soup. So Lisa got that one and I got the regular one. Brandon says, Marie Marie is right. My father is a truck driver and he makes a lot of seafood cakes and chicken salad for his long trips. That's a great tip. You can get your uh, protein in and uh, enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. All right. Oh, what else did they have here? We had homemade cocktail sauce. Oh my God, this sounds so good. Homemade tartar sauce, homemade cocktail sauce. You all can make your own. You can make your own tartar sauce. It's just relish and mayo. It's very good. You can make that at home. Sorry, y'all. It was a Maggie moment. I have these outbursts. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did meow. I need to get better at that. That wasn't elegant. Sorry. Going down memory lane. Absolutely. <laughs> truck drivers. Absolutely. Make it work. Absolutely. Shout out to the truck drivers. They bring all this stuff to our stores near you. So you can see your tartar sauce, your cocktail sauce, and even these little bay shrimp, the little tiny shrimp or, you know, shrimp that you could just toss onto a salad or pop in a soup. Great. Also great way to get some extra protein. Uh, what else do they have here? Some, I don't know, some type of wine or something. And then some mussels. Oh yeah. Oh, look at this price. King crab legs for the low, low price of $78. What does Brandon say? I got to get moving to job number two. Thank you, sir, for being here. Have a great day, y'all. Try guy, try guy Travels. Get my contact info from Maggie or AB. <sighs> I got to have it first, Brandon. I don't have your contact info. You got to send it to me. But thank you. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Um, so yes, you've got your king crab legs here. <sighs> a beast to get into. But oh, so good. That is a huge treat if you can get them. But yeah, $78 a pound. We'll wait. Mm, one day, y'all, one day I'll be able to just walk in and say, I'll have the king crab. One day. Today is not that day. 
what else is this? Fresh Pacific swordfish. So if you're interested uh, in like a good, like meaty fish, that kind of gives you not the texture of a steak, but like a dense meaty fish protein. There's your swordfish. Look at that big animal. Um, so there's your swordfish. You could buy that cut up. Yellowfin tuna uh, for our um, sushi or poke bowl lovers. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I haven't looked, Brandon. Thank you for the contact info. I will guard it well, um, and I'll check my Patreon. <laughs> Shout out to the Patreon. I do have an almost free Patreon. Who is at my door? Let me just see if it's a delivery. I wasn't expecting anyone. I have an almost free Patreon. Please check the Patreon. Oh, yeah, it must be a delivery. Um, it's $1. If you're interested in... Um, joining me on my elegance and etiquette journey. I've done a lot of work in personal development to refine, so I'm not meowing all the time. Uh, it's fun for me. Uh, I just took another etiquette uh, class. You all saw the poll on my YouTube, and I'd love to share it with you. But I only want to you know, give it to people who are interested. So uh, Maggie, the substitute teacher, will always be the cooking stuff. But if you're interested in the etiquette, the elegance, the soft skills, um, I do have another channel teachable moments with Maggie and a Patreon. So just look up Maggie, the substitute teacher, and you will find me. And um, the lowest price I could make it is a dollar. Marie Marie says, time to get into driver mode. You'll be listening. Have a great night. Be safe. Thank you, Marie Marie. You be safe on the road. So grateful to be able to be home. But I realize you, Brandon, all of y'all who have to go to work, I did it for 20 years. So I understand Hey, Terrell's in the house. Uh, Terrell Key, please check him out. He is a principal in our community, also part of the Lead Attorney Mastermind, has some great streams on everything that's happening in the education space, so check him out. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Mona. Join the Elegance Club. It's almost free. All right, so we got your yellowfin tuna. You can buy that. Hey, y'all, I'm getting hungry looking at all this. And what is this? Fresh Pacific rockfish. So if you want a whitefish, I had rockfish in South Africa, so Good. It's just so many different versions of whitefish, whether you like cod, whether you like tilapia, uh, catfish, this rockfish is really, really good. Terrell says Maggie is cooking in the Patreon and in the kitchen. Yes, you all, please come check us out. This week is a busy week, but we meet in the Elegance Club um, every other week, so twice a month. All are welcome. Uh, we have like a Zoom meeting, and it's going to be a case study, so I come prepared to teach you all something that I've learned. We'll look at some examples of what to do right and some etiquette opportunities, and then we'll do like a Q&A. So if you're interested in refining, y'all know I'm a small town girl, but I want to go to fancy places, and I want to make sure that I act accordingly. So if you're a lady, if you have a little lady, or you like ladies, you're more than welcome to come. All right. So that was the fish case. And again, they said they sell and it's different at each location. All right. So we walked past the fish case. Now we're actually coming into the restaurant. So I'm just showing you all they have like a little bar situation going on. We went on a Sunday afternoon. Um, so there wasn't too much going on at the bar. Let's see what else. Oh, I don't know why it does that. Make sure I give you all. So we did have reservations. Oh, this is me being greedy. This is not even our food, but I had to. Y'all look at this fish and chips. So we're walking to get seated. So we're walking to the hostess stand and um, food is being you know brought out. I didn't touch it. I didn't get close to it, but I just kind of <laughs> took a picture. So as the orders are being prepared, the waitresses are coming to get the food. But look at the... <laughs> Doesn't it look like AB's feet? Look at the beautiful pieces of fish. So this is fish and chips. <laughs> Mona is looking. I know. How can I walk past that and not get pictures for you all? Are you kidding me? So you've got your tray. You've got your wax paper. You've got your coleslaw, tartar, so tartar sauce, and cocktail sauce made in-house. You've got a bed of crispy fries. Uh, Hermesha did get that sitting next to me. And then two beautiful pieces of battered cod just sitting there for you. Who is jumping in? <laughs> Rodney says, oh my, I know. I'm greedy. I want all of it. You all, I see that and I'm just like, I want that. Then another plate comes by and I'm like, I want that. Then another plate comes by. That's why I'm just like, tell me what I'm having. What would be amazing for me is if I just went somewhere and they just sat me down and they said, 
Miss Maggie, there is no menu. You will just be having a 12 course tasting of the chef's selections for you. Yes. One day it's going to happen class. Okay. So yeah, I'm walking past and I see this in the window. Hello. All right. Oh, so. Oh yeah. And they have burgers up top. So, okay. The burgers coming down. Look up here up top. They have more stuff so you can get your burgers and fries. And I don't know if this is a salad, but yeah. So the cook is in the back cooking it up and I'm trying to walk by and act like I've been somewhere. All right. So the um, waiter is coming to get the food. All right. So now we are getting ready to get seated. And I told you all that um, the fish market, they have indoor and outdoor seating. So I'm just doing a panoramic so you all can see. Um, and we decided... Oh, there's AV. There's our lovely AV. Okay. So you all can see here. So imagine a cruise ship where, you know, the wall to wall windows. So you can see this is a little door. They have doors here. So I did make reservations. When you make reservations at the fish market online, it asks you if you want to dine inside or you want to dine outside. And of course, you know, in Atlanta, I'm thinking, ooh, California, it's going to be warm and sunny. You can see AB still has her hoodie on. So we were, you know, cold. And when I arrived, I told them, excuse me, we asked for outdoor seating, but can we switch to inside? So luckily it wasn't too packed. We were able to move inside. All right. So I'm just showing you all. Here's AB. So you can see the beautiful water. There's Hermesha getting ready to sit down. Okay, so you can see on the other side of the glass, you can see they have tables outside. So they have the little like um, shade uh, and then another railing, but you'll be hearing the water, you'll be smelling the salt and all that and eating outside, but it was just too cold. I looked at the ladies and I was like, y'all wanna be inside or outside? They were like, we wanna be inside, but we had that nice view, okay? So it goes all the way around. So yeah, look at the, look at this person out here. You can see what they're wearing, right? <laughs> to be eating outside. So it wasn't a beautiful, it was a beautiful day, but it wasn't sunny. So we're sitting, there's a nice server. We are sitting um, like this four seats of tables right by the wall. So we're right behind. So we were at a table just like that. Um, so for each one inside, there's an outside. Who do we have here? We have Celeste in the house. She says, tardy to class. You're never tardy. You all can come late. You can leave early. You can multitask. Life happens. I understand. I'm just happy that you're here. Hello, Maggie in class. Hello, my dear. All right. We're talking seafood today in San Diego. All right. So you can see the, um, you know, the decorations very, oh no, oh no. What did I do? Oh, sorry. I thought I clicked off. Sorry, y'all. Struggle streaming. So you can see very nautical, very, you know, all of that shipping and fishing kind of stuff. All right. And so if you don't want to be close to the window, they also have closer into the restaurant uh, table seating there. So I'm just doing a little spin around so you all can see the restaurant. So inside, by the window or outside. All right. So let us continue. So like I said, at the meetup, and you all will see all of that on Saturday, but there were some events, there were two events that were on the itinerary, and then we also had some free time. So this was after when we were on free time, the ladies and I decided to go out to eat. All right, so here's the menu. We've already gone through the menu. So they had the menu on the table, very much like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, a restaurant with a big like legal size paper menu. So I'm just doing a quick little uh, view of it, but we've already seen they have, you know, everything from oysters. AV was excited. You know, she's from Boston. She's here for the oysters, um, but you can see they have everything um, for you to try. All right. So because it was cold, you know, we started with the beverage and I did ask, uh oh, because it was cold, I did ask for hot tea. So he asked me what kind of tea I wanted. Um, they brought a variety out. I helped myself. Um, they had a little pack of honey and lemon, and I got chamomile tea. So this is the chamomile tea bag. So he brought out some hot water because it was a little bit cool. So that's how I started um, with the hot tea. But of course, they have, you know, everything. So this is the tea uh, plate that they brought out. So you can see Lisa and I had our choices of teas. What did we have here? Um, each sachet. Um, I'm trying to look here. 
um, Earl Grey in the blue, uh, Assam tea over here. This is chamomile. This one is tropical green tea. And then I don't know what this one is in the bottom. They may or may not be in my purse or luggage. But anyway, let's carry on. So we had our choice of teas. So that was nice. All right. So A.B. has had her way. She is excited. The lawyer, lawyer, they're bringing in the oysters. Let me see if I have sound for you all. Oh, in the calamari. Let me see if I can get you some sound because I did try to get them to dis to describe everything and Avi ordered her her prosecco so she wanted her sparkling. Okay. Okay. okay perfect yes all right thank you and what are the oh that looks lovely what are the sauces for the calamari uh, the darker red one is the cocktail sauce but it's but it actually is cocktail sauce but we're doing tabasco and cilantro okay Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. So let me take the sound off. So I see your question. Hopefully you guys were able to hear that. So yes, they did have clam chowder and I did order it. So you're going to see that. All right. So as you can see, AV wanted the oysters. So we got the Rockefeller oysters, I believe. I don't know what they're called. There's a name for them, but you can see they're served on ice. They are raw. They open them for you and they separate them for you because there's a little membrane in there that you need to get um, get separated. Um, so they have that. So AV showed us how you pour the water out. You put a little Tabasco sauce, a little horseradish, hot sauce if you want to, and toss it back and it just kind of slides down. You can chew it. I just kind of swallow it in one big gulp. It's a texture thing. Either you like them or you don't. I had one and then I let A.V. have the rest. Um, so you can see we had um, uh, oysters for the table. So, and they have the little oyster fork. So you'll see here, and that is when you do your dining etiquette, there's different uh, serving ware and silverware for each course. So, oh, we're recycling is coming late. So you'll see here, that's a little fork if you need to pick it up out of the shell that you can. Uh, what else? And then, okay, so they're bringing the oysters. And then I also ordered calamari for the table. All right. So calamari is squid. So it's cut up, little looks like little octopus pieces. It's kind of chewy and rubbery, but um, it is battered and fried. And then they also had some other veggies in there fried some green peppers and some red peppers, not spicy. Uh, and then they had two sauces on the side here. You can see they had like a sweet sauce and a cocktail sauce. So kind of like a chili sauce and then a cocktail sauce. So you could dip them. Sometimes when you get calamari, they'll have like a white creamy sauce, um, but they served it. So we squeezed the lemon over all of it and then went to town. So I'm here for the calamari. AB's here for the um, uh, oysters. So we're getting a little bit of everything. And then there's the Prosecco. And that's when I saw that. And I was like, I want to be grown. I want one. So I ordered one too. All right. Just a little toast celebration after um, after a, bit, a great meetup. Okay. So asking you shall receive. There's your clam chowder. Let me see if I can get some sound for you. So I ordered clam chowder and some rolls. Those are the sourdough rolls. The bread was good. It could have been a little bit softer. It was kind of like crusty bread. You had to kind of get in there, but I ate it or two. All right, let's see what they say. Oh, yes, it does look great. Wow. Yes. I never tried that. Oh, oh yeah, so Amy, tell us about this. Uh, all right. So you can see the clam chowder here. I just ordered a cup. I know I'm moving pretty fast. This is good for me to see. I need to slow down. So you see the clam chowder here. He said that this is something that they are known for. And if you can see in the back, so I ordered the regular clam chowder, but back here, Lisa ordered the Manhattan clam chowder, which is the one that's like a tomato base. So we got both versions. They put some fresh parsley on there. And then you have those oyster crackers on the side. You all know the oyster crackers um, that you put in your soup. So you put it in there. You've got the clam. You've got the cream sauce. It's just a uh, really good flavor. So we have our soup. We have our oysters. 
We have our calamari. We have our bread. And then he came to say, are you ready to order? Y'all, honestly, I should have been done. I was done, but I continued. This is my problem. But we're getting back on track today. I'm doing my little fast. All right. So clam chowder. And then these are the sourdough rolls. Nothing to write home about. If you like sourdough bread, I like it more sliced, like in a sandwich. But this was just, and they weren't warm. They were room temperature, which is okay. But they were kind of crusty on the outside, so you can see. But just get in there and slather that butter on. But sourdough bread is uh, pretty popular, especially out west. So you can see on the table, we got our calamari here. We got our bread. We got our oysters. Oh, and the clam chowder. Psh, come on. Um, get me now. All right. So here I am with the bread. Okay. I got my little, <laughs> we're trying, all four of us are trying with the oysters. All right. Let me give you guys some sound. AB is teaching us how to do it right. Okay, so if you're an oyster connoisseur, you already know, but literally you pick one out of the ice. Usually they're attached to the shell. That's why you have a little fork to scoop it out there. But um, a restaurant like this will go ahead and detach them for you. And since, you know, they're in there with the ice, there may be like a little bit of water, or a little bit of liquid. Uh, maybe it's ocean water. I don't know. So you just kind of she was telling us to tilt it out a little bit so you can get a little bit of the liquid out. Then you put the cocktail sauce on there and I put a little bitty drop of horseradish on there. You can see like literally just that little bit because I don't like a lot of horseradish and then you toss it back. Some people love them. I tried one just to say I had it. But this is, this is AV all day. Enjoy your oysters. Enjoy, enjoy. All right, so let's move on. You see I'm down here with the bread, so I'm enjoying the um, bread and butter. All right, so like I said, I had my tea, but AV had a sparkly, so I wanted one too. So they had these little mini bottles of Prosecco, um, so they would uh, bring that out and pour it into your shampoo pain flute. And here's a little um, etiquette tip for you all. I already started that new class. I didn't know, but I should have known. The different bottle, the different wine glasses that are for your wine drink have a purpose. If you already knew this, forgive me, I'm learning. But the red wine goes in the big like bowl, um, the one that has more opening because red wine usually has more aroma. And so it allows those um, scents and those notes to kind of escape and um, allow you to enjoy the wine because, you know, part of the drinking is to smell it. But the smaller the wine glasses, like your white wine is not as big. Um, and of course, we hold it by the stem because we don't want to the hand to warm it. But it's a more delicate flavor. So you don't want it to escape as much. And that's why your Prosecco uh, or your sparkling or champagne is in the little flute because you want to keep the bubbles in there. If it were in a big basin, they would escape. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm learning in this latest etiquette class that I'm taking, the dining etiquette, Jamila Musayeva. Um, so if you guys are interested, that's the kind of stuff we'll talk about in the Elegance Club. All right, let us continue. So I ordered a Prosecco. You can see it came nice and cold and I had finished my tea and um, oh yeah. So I got my Prosecco and uh, nice and bubbly. Again, this is the flute and the reason why it's in that glass. We don't want it. Man, I'm shaky. What's going on? I'm probably trying to eat and video for you guys, but it was fun. So I just got uh, another video. All right. So our Prosecco is there. I did want to take a slow motion, slow motion of the bubbles going up. It's just fun. It's just fun. All right, so we're enjoying toasting to life. All right, so I did order crab cake. So like I told you, he came and he said, are you ready to order after I've had calamari and bread and oysters and soup? So I said, I can't have an entree. Uh, he said, would you just like to make another appetizer your meal? So I did order the crab cakes. That must be another package, y'all. Y'all know I shop online a lot. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. I see the box. Um, the crab cakes were good. 
honestly, mine were kind of better. Um, they were fine. I just like really big lumps of crab. And then the sauce that it was on was kind of vinegary. And it had the arugula on the side. We're going to make crab cakes tomorrow. <gasps> Look who's here. Lisa the Happy Housewife. Lisa was with us. Yes, you made it. We were just talking about our meal. And uh, I was talking, there's Lisa in the purple, was talking about that you had the Manhattan clam chowder. But I have to give the fish market credit. I asked, anytime food is brought to me now, I whip out my camera and I'm, can you tell us what's in it? And I just want the waiter to kind of explain. So I'm doing, when I'm doing these dining documentaries with you all, you all can hear what they say. Oh, it's an arugula salad with, you know, vinaigrette and this and that. The server, God bless him. He actually went to the kitchen and he got the ingredients for me. And he literally came back with a list of everything that was in it because I asked him, can you tell us what's in it? And he was like, uh, let me find out for you. So there's the picture. So you all can see beautiful presentation, cooked to perfection. Um, flavor was good. Lisa says her food was delicious. <laughs> said the waiter was scared. I am that way. I kind of not in a bad way, but I do ask a lot of questions for research purposes. I want to know. I want to know. Isn't that a song? want to know if he really loves me. Oh, how do I know? Y'all know what I mean. Anyway, another Maggie moment. But uh, yeah, cook to perfection. This was an appetizer, so you could share it, or this could be a very light meal. And like BLJ and Marie Marie say, crab cakes travel well. All right. Maybe I scared the waiter. So what did he bring? this. He actually went to the kitchen. You know what? I should recreate it. He brought this list. When I asked him what was in it, he brought this list, y'all. It says crab, panko breadcrumbs, mayonnaise, eggs, parsley, mustard, Worcester, you know how it is, shallots, green onions, garlic, table salt, and pepper. And then this is what I didn't care for, the lemon caper sauce. But look at all that's in it. Whitney Houston moment, I know, right? But yeah, he brought the actual ingredients. God bless him. God bless him. He was just trying to make sure he answered my questions. So yes, this is everything that's in there, in the caper sauce, in the champagne vinaigrette. Wow, that was a lot. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so then I took another video. You all can see, you've seen the crab cakes. <laughs> I was... I was like, he actually brought the whole list out. So there's Lisa. Ah, Lisa's getting ready to try her uh, creme brulee. And I was like, one moment, please. Can I take a video? So Lisa's getting ready to try it. She's telling us that it's got a nice crackly shell. Ooh, because I couldn't decide. Ah, yeah. So she's getting ready to taste her creme brulee. This I have made before. It is exquisite. Oh, so good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, must be good. <laughs> All right. All right, what you got there, Lisa? All right, let us know how is it. Ooh, looks like a, a crackly glass. Ooh. <laughs> I'm so extra. Yeah. Got the strawberries, the blueberries, the Good. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. I just relive it all over again. Lisa says it was rich and delicious. Delicious, and yes, she offered a little bite. So I couldn't decide between the um, the key lime pie or the uh, creme brulee, and I ended up going with the key lime pie. So she brought it, beautiful presentation made with real lime juice. You can see there my key lime pie with some fresh berries and cream. A little goes a long way. Got me right here. Nice Kung Pao moment with the key lime pie. Now what we have here? Uh-huh. All right, you guys. So I had dessert. It was so good. That cake, it was just, it was everything. It was everything. 
So we came outside to say, oh, sorry. We came outside. I'm just taking a little spin around. I don't know if I'm going to see the statue, but you can see outside. We didn't want to eat outside, but you can see the pier. You can see people are out here. You can sit outside and enjoy yourself. Um, there's the, oh, what did Brandon tell us? The USS something part-time museum, part-time they can use it if they need to. So they have the Navy ship there. Uh, people are out just, you know, talking, but you can see everybody's got their coats on. It was cold. Uh, so yeah, we just came outside. Um, you can see some of the trees there. I'm just doing a little spin around. You can see more of this like museum um, thing going on. You can see some interesting looking trees, but there's us, our stuff. We're just coming out to take a picture by the water. There's A.V. There's, <laughs> there's A.V. and Hermesha. We're just talking amongst ourselves and a beautiful um, view of the pier. All right. Let's see what else. And there we are. The lovely, the Midway, that's the ship. Yes, a battleship, Rodney. Absolutely. Uh, don't ask me the history, but it's part-time museum, part-time um, battleship. But yes, you could see cruise ships there. When you watch the replay, you'll see as we pulled up, there were some cruise ships there. Um, there are my, I don't have sisters by birth, but these are my sisters. So there's Hermesha on the left. There's Maggie, there's A.V., and there's Lisa. So we had an incredible lunch, and uh, I cannot wait for you all to see what we have cooking up. Lisa says it's called the Midway. Um, so we wanted to give you know, our goodbyes and hug it up because everybody was getting ready to head to the airport or to their place if they were staying another day. This was Sunday uh, afternoon. Um, but I'll just uh, share with you all, excuse me, we have something very, very, very special cooking up. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, you will hear about it Thursday and you will see it on Friday. Yes, check out the mastermind. Rodney says, gorgeous. Thank you for the compliment. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Um, so I don't know why I took a picture of this bench, but I guess I'm showing you all the backside of the restaurant uh, so you can see. But thank you. Thank you so much for that. We, got, um, we definitely want to give you all uh, the best of what we have. All right. So yeah, I think the last video was just my uh, Uber driver. He had a road rage moment, so I was just capturing for research purposes, for documentation purposes. <sighs> so let's end on a positive note. That's what I wanted to show you all. So that was the fish market in San Diego. Incredible food, incredible company. I love these ladies. I had a great time in San Diego. So that is it for the two things that I did in free time. So yesterday we talked about the dessert place. Incredible. Today we talked about seafood. Incredible. The next time we talk about the mastermind, it'll be Saturday when I'm giving you all the play by play. I'm going to do two versions. I'm going to record a version, just a recording, maybe like 15 minutes or so, like I did for the last recap. Um, lead attorney had one last year this time. And I went, it was before I started live streaming. So I just did a video. So those of you all who weren't able to make it, you get to see the play-by-play. -play, and then I will premiere it uh, Saturday as a stream. So you all can come up. I'll pull up my own video so you guys can see it. And I can answer your questions as I uh, walk you through everything. But yes, Rodney says, thank you for the tour. Oh, you said, love your Maggie blazer. Oh, this right here. Yes. Let me, um, let me show it to you. I actually dropped this earlier for, um, where is it for, uh, was it Linda Kelly who wanted to know? Marley Lily is the brand and they monogram for free. This is their pullover sweatshirt. So thank you. I'm going to drop the link so you have it. You can get your name or your kid's name or your initials put on there. So this is what I'm wearing. Um, you know, just the Maggie, uh, sweatshirt, just staying a little warm. So, okay. So that's all that I had uh, tomorrow. Uh, please turn on your notifications. We have a huge collab cooking with Aisha. I'm making crab cakes. Very excited uh, for that. And then, uh, yeah, Thursday, it'll be Chantel Simone. And then Friday, stay tuned. 
Oh, so I'll give you all a 30 second um, commercial to close out. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping me to monetize my passion for food. Uh, I was monetized in four months um, because of you all. And um, I do have a course now. If you want to know how to monetize your passion, um, I have a course. It's $50. You get lifetime access. It's 15 different videos over two hours. You can preview it for free. The link is in the description. And I walk you through my approach on how to get subscribers, how I got the watch hours. I put screenshots, show you the sample emails that you get from Google. So if you like my dining documentary style, that's how I'm teaching you in the course. So you have all of the information. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, um, it might be helpful for you. If you have a YouTube channel and you're not monetized yet, it might be helpful for you. Or if you want to join the Maggie memberships, you get it for free. And uh, the memberships are on YouTube. If you look on a laptop or a computer, there's a join button. And I have memberships starting at $5 per month. And you get early access. And I just thought of this. I'm going to post for the members what's happening on Friday. So they're going to know before everybody else does. So that's all that I had. I'm going to let you all have your evening. Instagram class is dismissed. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, cooking collab with Cooking with Aisha. All right, you all. I will see you tomorrow. Class is dismissed. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you all tomorrow.